This episode of Joe Genius is brought to you by Gorilla Glue. Ahoy! Let's sail through the Internet Science Lab of the Seas. This is Revision 3's Joe Genius. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Joe Genius, the show where backyard science goes big time. I'm Jonah Ray. Now, I'm going to need you to turn up the volume and turn off the auto-tune. Because this episode is all about the world of sound. And a one, two, three, four. Check out this guy from the Netherlands. He's making shapes out of water using sonic vibrations, which is known as cymatics. Cymatics is the study of visible sound and vibration. But how does it work? You can think of it as water origami, but that's a little bit too zen. Let's get to the science of it. Making these dancing shapes depends on the shape of the container that's being vibrant, and of course, the frequency of the sound traveling through it. This Joe genius filled a plastic cup with water and then placed that cup on a speaker cone. Then he connected computer software to the speaker to generate the sound waves. As you play with different frequencies, the water molecules in the cup danced and jiggled and laughed and played. It was a joyous day for those molecules. Here's So Sakai from Japan. He's using two different vibrating speakers to create these shapes. When our next backyard scientist wants to make music, he just heads to the grocery store. A grocery store where, you ask? In a little place called Japan. Take it away, Juji Koyama! Asparagus demo tsukutte mimashita. Demo, ninjin to paprika no trumpeto desu. In this next video, a few young physics students are putting their musical science skills to the test. Leon Theremin invented one of the world's first electronic musical instruments, which he then promptly named after himself. Here's how it works. The two antennas, one horizontal and one vertical, are sensitive to electromagnetic changes. Our hands have a small electric charge, so when they're moved closer or farther from an antenna, they disturb the local electric fields. Move your hand closer to the looped antenna, and the pitch goes higher. Move your hand closer to the vertical one, and it softens the volume. That means a theremin player has to have crazy control of their hands and fingers while keeping their body really still. And an amplifier is what makes the spooky call audible. Looks like those kids are keeping the science of music alive, and for that, we award them the Joe Science Award. Keep it up, guys, and maybe one day you'll get to score a 1950s science fiction film. In fact, anything that vibrates can be made into a musical instrument. It's just some things sound better than others. This time it's a, a cookie tin guitar. I think it's pretty sweet. Hey, you big dumb Harry Eight, get Gorilla Glue. It's made for you. Gorilla Glue for the toughest jobs on planet Earth. For more information, visit GorillaGlue.com or head to your local hardware store to check out all their amazing products for yourself. No Joe Genius toolbox is complete without it. So don't come crying to me when you don't have any at the next Joe Genius meeting. Here's Neil Tidwell. He made an instrument only a Scottish garbage man could love. Ah, beautiful. I actually heard he's putting together an orchestra down at the landfill. And now, the soothing sounds of the Outback. Okay, today I am going to be playing the classic pipe didgeridoo. It's uh, made from two inch Schedule 80 PE gas pipe. Remember to take off the end, make it high. More like didgeridoo, don't, am I right? 
<laughs> no, I'm not. It's part of their culture, and we respect that here on Joe Genius. Anyways, so that's basically it. And you know what else we respect? Annoying your neighbors. Meet Kevin Jigman, the inventor of an awesome musical contraption that's currently bugging the people of Pittsburgh. What do you get when you take one beater piece of wood, one little dark string, and a record player turntable? Well, hopefully I'm going to end up with a bass guitar. Ah, there we go. The object of my desire. The thing that makes it electric is you put it across the pickup that the needle would usually ride. And with a little Gorilla Glue, he's ready to go. God, that stuff sticks so good. I'm sorry, I can't even wait for the glue to dry. I plug this thing into my trusty hi-fi and see what happens. Kevin rocked it until the cows came home. Uh, and by that, I mean until the neighbors called the cops on him. Now, a candle can't play a tune. If it could, it would probably sound something like smooth jazz. So lucky for us, it can't. But leave it up to a Joe genius to then harness the flame and create music with it. What's happening here is pulses of electricity from a circuit board are transmitted into a candle flame using wires. Sing with real oomph now and the pulses of electricity temporarily disturb the flame. Each spurt of increased energy heats the air really quickly, and the rapid expansion of air molecules creates a sound wave. When these pulses repeat very quickly, the sound waves come closer together and create that lovely musical tone you're hearing. Now play Mexican hat dance. Candle jazz. You know, talking is just sound vibrations too. And if you replace air with something lighter like helium, well, those vibrations will change. You like right that? Yeah, I like that. <laughs> There's homium, helium, and apnea, erbium, phosphorus, and branson, and fluorine, and terbium, magnesium, mercury, magnesium, sprosium, scanium, cerium, cesium. Or if you want to go for something a little more James Earl Jonesy, try sulfur hexafluoride. <laughs> you see, two very different results. Here's scientist Darwin Deming, and no, I'm not kidding, that's his real name. He's going to tell us the science behind it, but in a deep and sexy voice. Sulfur hexafluoride, it's a gas that is six times more dense than air, which makes your vocal cords, uh, when you speak, the denser gas slows down the sound waves, so it makes your voice go deeper. It's quite the opposite of helium. So While helium and sulfur hexafluoride aren't toxic, we strongly recommend breathing oxygen. It's just a lot better. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You never know, dear, that much I love you. So please don't take my sunshine away. <sighs> it's uh, really stuck in my voice. I got a little uh, froggy in there. So. <sighs> You gotta breathe out real deep in and out because it's so dense that it sinks to the bottom of your lungs. Anyways, fun stuff. Sulfur x fluoride. Stop the presses. I want to thank our sponsor, Gorilla Glue. Gorilla Glue for the toughest jobs on planet Earth. For more information, visit GorillaGlue.com or head to your local hardware store to check out all their amazing products for yourself. God, that stuff sticks so good. Now we've heard sweet jams from the produce aisle, candlelight serenades, and helium balloons, but only one will take home the Grammy of Science. And the Joe Genius Award goes to Kevin Jigman and his homemade bass guitar. Congrats, Kevin, and keep on rocking out in the name of science. Little pigeon neck, you're good. Naughty candle, I shall terminate your existence. All right, that'll do it for me. I'm Jonah Ray, and please leave me alone while I practice my theremin on my iPhone. That's a good vibration. Joe Genius is brought to you in part by the National Science Foundation.